Hi Aries, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your September 1st to the 15th, 2021 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bulls sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Aries. September 1st to the 15th, 2021, Aries. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels. And spirit guides, angels, and spirit guides. All right. At the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the death card, Scorpio energy. If we have this within our natal chart, it's going to be very rooting, kind of balancing energy for us. And then we have the Empress. There's transformation through birth. Death and birth come together. There's a dying away of the old self and the rebirth of the new. And there's a claiming of power and beauty and brilliance during this time. It moves us to our inner self, the Four of Swords. The Two of Wands reverse, so this isn't a time to look externally. A lot is going to be happening internally with our inner selves. And then we have the Page of Pentacles, Earth Sign Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. If we're born on the cusp with Taurus, or if we have Earth Sign Energy within our chart, this is going to be very much a teacher time for us. This energy is going to come forward as a teacher. We have our emotional self. We have the Seven of Cups. <laughs> Excuse me. Our dreams come forward. And then we have the High Priestess. The veil is lifted from our eyes. I love that we have such strong sacred feminine energy here with the High Priestess and the Empress. That's really beautiful. And then we have in the public arena, we have the Four of Swords again. There is a real need for us to rest during this time here, Aries, and the Knight of Cups. As we are defending our hearts, we have to take into consideration that we need to refuel our batteries. We need to charge ourselves. And that's going to be really important. It can be something that we overlook. Just as Aries, it's kind of like, I can keep on going. I can keep on fighting. I can keep on, you know, embracing 
everything that I need to get done. And then I totally forget to take care of myself. So if we don't take care of ourselves during this time, not that anything bad is going to happen to us, but you know, we're going to find that we might get a little bit of the sniffles. And so we have to stay in bed or we might have a headache one day and or a migraine and we can't really, you know, do the things that we had planned. There's going to be stuff that happens that makes us stop, calm down and connect. If we don't connect with who we are, with our bodies and our souls and ourselves at this time, there's there's going to be a curveball that comes in. It's kind of like, you know, the car doesn't start or something like that. Not wishing this on anybody, but just saying this is what spirit is showing that we're going to have the brakes put on us and we're going to have to take care of ourselves. So just to make sure that that doesn't happen, make sure you get good sleep, make sure you're taking care of yourself, make sure that you, you know that you matter and you act as if you matter. Okay. Now the energy that we need to be mindful of during this time, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly guide this reading and show me clearly. And it is the hermit. Now this is Virgo energy. This is going to be the fact that we're really, really drawn to the mysterious during this time. Kind of like the harder it is the, to understand, the more of a kind of like exclusive, you know, kind of, you know, mysterious cloak it has around it. That's going to be what we're drawn to, but it's not going to hold true the way that we want it to. It's not going to lead to the revelations that we want, the things that are going to come forward or the things that already are out in the sun. There are things that we see every single day, but yet we as human beings, we overlook it and we think, oh, it has to be pomp and circumstance that really brings this beauty forward. And during this time, it's just not, it's just not. So don't be, don't be pulled in by somebody who makes you think, oh, it has to be all like, you know, all mysterious. It doesn't. We can also have a tendency to kind of close the door, you know, to, to go to the extreme and say, okay, well, I'm really going to take care of myself. I'm going to close the door and I'm going to just either focus on me. It's not focus on me. It's like, I'm going to focus on what everybody else needs, but I'm going to do it in a very quiet way. So I'm going to think that it's okay. Now we're still embracing our warrior spirit during that time. So we have to make sure that we, you know, just embrace a calm, connected understanding of self and that we take time for ourselves our chakra energy for this time angels and spirit guides show me clearly oh that one right here fell right out and it is angels and masters this is the soul star chakra located six inches above our crown this is divinity and the angels protecting us this is us knowing that during this time we are protected we are guided we are loved and we are seen and that's going to be something that's really really beautiful because when we when we pray or when we meditate or when however we connect to this higher sense like i'm not in this world completely by myself this is going to be the time where we start to feel ourselves becoming more centered within the world, becoming more centered within ourselves and knowing that somebody is listening. If it's even just our own subconscious heart is listening to ourselves and helping us work out these problems so we can say, I want X, Y, Z, and then starting to find solutions as we dream, as we, you know, connect, these are going to be the things that open up the door with the Scorpio energy right here dying way of the old self, the rebirth of the new, we start to see ourselves transforming. Do we always want ourselves to be transforming the way divinity has planned? No. Is it powerful and important and beautiful for us? Yes, at times it is. And sometimes it's just, it's just painful. Transformation can just be painful. It's kind of like when you realize that, when you realize you have to face the hardships and you have to face them and there's no white knight coming in to save you. And if you have that, you know, white knight that has come in and saved you, that's, that's brilliant. But when you realize that a lot of life is standing on your own two feet, that's a transformation that is painful. And a lot of people, when they talk about that specific moment, that specific moment, and it's usually a painful thing where they were in it on their own, where they were, they were just standing there on their own. That is something that transforms us forever. And so with the the death card. It's, it's this transformative energy. It can be intense like that, or it can be that we step into ourselves. We start to have confidence. We start to hold our shoulder, shoulders back, our head up high. And it's like, but this is me. This is me. And I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of how I am embracing my life and my soul and myself. And I'm moving forward. And it brings us to this beautiful place of birth, this beautiful place of creation. Now this can be actually having a child or adopting a child, however you are welcoming that child into your life. But this can also be that 
we are birthing forward creativity into the world, that we are taking a dream that we have nurtured for an astoundingly long time and saying it has a voice, it has a purpose, and it has a reason for being here. We start to become students as we embrace our prosperity within. We start to become students in our inner self of the of the prosperous world, of the bountiful world, of the world of success and individuality and innovation and understanding. And we start to look at the seeds that we are planting and why we are planting them, why we are calling forward the wealth of the individual, why we are, you know, looking at things in a different way and saying, how can I utilize my talents, my abilities, my, my dreams, my successes and my failures to move me forward. This is a time inwardly where we can find ourselves gaining new information, learning, always learning, always understanding, always gathering, always kind of opening up that door. This is also going to be a time where there are no limits. There are no limits to what we can do. And we start to look within ourselves. It's not going to be that all of a sudden the key comes externally. The key comes internally, the way that we are processing things, the way that we are seeing things within ourselves, the way that we are gaining an understanding, the way that we are looking, the way that we even see that looking within isn't shutting the door on the outside world, but it is saying that for me to embrace the external world, I have to embrace my internal self, my internal reason, my internal understanding. And it brings us to the four of swords, which says, honor yourself. Look at all the hardships, all the pains, all the disappointments that you have been through and honor the road that you have walked, even if it is overwhelming at times, even if you think, but there isn't honor there. We have the guardian by us as we sleep, as our subconscious self comes into awakening and understanding with our conscious self. And we start to see the pathway forward. We need to take care of ourselves during this time that is absolutely being made abundantly clear by spirit that we, we need to take time for us. This is also going to be a time where meditation, sleep is really important. We can't do without during this time. And we can have a tendency, especially if we get on the focus that if I just put myself out there more, if I just, you know, push and, and go, everything will become clear. The answers again are within. So just being mindful that 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 kind of like drive of it's all external, it's not internal, that's going to be a little bit of a lie during this time. It moves us to the seven of cups in our heart we're holding our dreams we're holding our dreams we're holding what we desire what we want what we need why we're here you know and we're also really starting to look at the beauty that we stand for and not the beauty that somebody else wants us to create within the world not the the, the beauty of society but the beauty of us as an individual and as we look at this we start to embrace our dreams again we start to say there is power within me and this power isn't given to anybody else it is boldly embraced taken understood by me as it opens up the door as it you know brings dreams that I shoved in the black back closet and now I get to bring them forward I get to say this is what I desire this is what I want this is who I am and our dreams become a powerful part of our heart because we're lifting the veil from our eyes and so much of the veil being lifted from our eyes during this time is going to be this sense of why did I step away from that dream to begin with? Will I be able to embrace this love, this light, this joy of self, this understanding of self, this beauty of, of being? The high priestess sees what cannot be seen, sees what everybody else turns a blind eye to. Our hearts are saying, but I see the truth. This is going to be a time where we can be deeply disturbed by things, where it can, it can bring us to tears because we can see so much more than just the headline of the day. We can see the, the humanity behind it. And this is a time where we feel so tremendously. And Aries, when we feel tremendously as a warrior, we want to take action and the action comes from within. It comes from taking care of the self. It comes from birthing forward the dreams and the ideas and the beauty and the light and the peace and the harmony and the brilliance that is us on this journey. And it is. And so we open up this door and we, we start to embrace that which others turn a blind eye to. And as we do this, we are again told, make sure you rest because a lot is coming at you. Make sure you take care of yourself because if you don't, who will? Make sure you see who it is that you are and you ex respect the journey that you are on because nobody else will. And this isn't to be melodramatic. It is to say that when we give, people take. And if we're constantly giving, 
and never taking time for ourselves. We will always have somebody else needing us, demanding from us, you know, weighing more upon our shoulders. And this is a time to look at the hard road we have walked. And instead of it being with damnation or scorn, it is to say, I walk this road. I found where I stand, or I am finding where I stand. And nobody can take the journey from me. But the journey is sometimes more important than the destination. And that is a powerful, wise thing for us to know. And it brings us then to the Knight of Cups. In the public arena, we are defenders of the heart. We need to bring our love, our dreams, our insight into situations. We need to say the door is opening. It comes from within because the high priestess only works from within. It comes from within, but it guides me forward. The Knight of Cups is this beautiful sense of understanding. If we're born on the cusp with Pisces, this is coming out. This Pisces part of our personality is coming out quite profoundly. But the heart shines, and the heart is a warrior. And we might think as you know, the ultimate warrior, as the god of war, Ares, in Greek mythology, we might think, oh, well, you know, if you put your heart into it, you put vulnerability into it. It's like, yes, but you also put something very real forward, not something cruel and calculating. And so we lead with our hearts during this time. It means that we become more, more introverted. It means that we become a little bit more within our own world, within our own energy, within our own quiet understanding. But we're building something tremendous. And as we build this tremendous thing, we transform and we give birth to something extraordinary. Expect from this time, fantastic ideas to come forward. The beginning of a book, the, the outline of a picture, the solving of that mathematical equation that you've been pondering over, or the way to increase sales, you know, in whatever division, or the, the, the solving of that problem that you've been going over time and time again. This is a time where the answers can come and they come from the most powerful but overlooked place. And that's going to be ourselves. The subconscious energy to be mindful of is the chariot. It is letting our emotions get the best of us and charging forward. It is people who are all emotion and they just charge forward, but they make such messes as they do. So we have to be mindful because we're going to be very drawn to anything that has to do with the heart, anything that has to do with emotional empathy. And this is a time where we can get swept up in other people's chaos without their desire to heal that chaos. They like to keep it going. And so this is a time where we have to be mindful of that. We can be swept up into somebody else's emotional chaos very, very easily. It moves us to our subconscious chakra self, and that's creativity, the sacral chakra. I love the sacral chakra because it's a tricky chakra. It's where creative and sexual energy is held, which is beautiful, but it's also where all the negative combative energy from this life and past lives are held. And that's why we have blockages around creativity. We have blockages around the creativity of sex or around the way that we express ourselves. Not everybody, this isn't everybody, but this is for the people who do. And we're saying here, you know what? I'm stepping into freedom. I'm stepping into the creative beauty of myself to say, this is me and this is what I love and this is what I want and this is what I desire from life. And all the trauma and the drama that I've carried, we have ourselves here with the four of, of sorts. We have ourselves acknowledging it and we have ourselves really seeing everything that we have been through, not with scorn or hurt or hate or, or, you know, anger, but with the courageous understanding that I'm a warrior. And as a warrior, I, I have such tremendous power and such tremendous humanity for everything that I have gone through and everything that I have built. And nothing will stop me from my goal to move forward towards my success and in my glory of the individual self. It moves us to our rooted energy, subconscious energy for this time and its strength, Leo energy. It is calling our strength forward. It is embracing strength and determination and focus and understanding. It is not brute force strength. It is not saying if I have the bigger, you know, weapon, I am, I am stronger. If I have the bigger muscles, I am stronger. You know, it is saying here, the strength is the power of the heart, the determination of the soul, the insight of the self that opens up the doors, that walks us forward in a way that people wouldn't see as strong, but 
in a way that changes civilizations, that parts mountains, that changes the courses of rivers. It is the strength of, of the will of the human spirit that is unsurmountably powerful, po powerful or insurmountably powerful. And it moves us then. It moves us then to our inner selves, which is the King of Cups. Again, our emotions are everything. Our heart is everything. The King of Cups is one of my favorite kings because he says, I only rule me. And that is the only person that we rule. And he looks at the chaos of emotions. He looks at the chaos of the individual. And he says, I see it. And I'm not being dragged down into it. I stand as a pillar of strength of my emotional self, of my heart, of my joy, of my being. And I walk forward in pride of person and determination of soul. It leads us to our subconscious emotional self, which is the devil. And the devil comes in to, to tempt, to bring us to old coping mechanisms that are not healthy, are not helpful. And it says subconsciously, I believe that there are limits. And consciously, we have to say that there aren't. And meditate so our subconscious starts to see that the veil is lifted, that the limitations other people put on themselves is the limitations for other people, not for us. We get to break down the barriers, open up the doors, move forward in a way that is really quite extraordinary. It brings us to our subconscious public self, and that is the tower. God, source, spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, has pushed us out of our comfort zone and is saying, this is where I need you to stand. This is why you're being transformed. This is what you need to birth forward. The road hasn't been easy because remember, a diamond does not become just because it wants to be. A diamond becomes because it is a lonely piece of coal put under a tremendous amount of pressure. And through that pressure, it becomes a diamond. It becomes astoundingly valuable. But more importantly than it being given a monetary value, it becomes unbelievably strong. And that is it. That is what we are. Valuable and unbelievably strong. All right, Aries, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the blessings that are to come. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony. <laughs>